Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I built my home network. Like a pro, right? So whether you're looking for a video on how you're going to build an office network or home office network, this is the right video for you. Why? Because it could be a reference for you on how you're going to decide which are the devices that you're going to buy or how you're going to set it up. Your case might not be the same as my case, but this could serve as a reference for you. Now, things will be a little bit similar, but not exactly the same, right? So before we dive into the details of the things that I did so that I can come up with this, let's say simple, but very good setup, I want to give you a couple of reasons why you need to build your home or your office network at a very good starting point. So as we all know, things that we buy right now, devices like CCTV, TV, of course, computers, a technology for your gate, for your door, all these kinds of things are going to be connected to the internet. So you need to consider that one even if you do not have it yet because later on, you're going to buy these things, right? So for me, there is more uh, improvement that I can do here given that I have planned those ones because there are only a few things that I have right now that can be connected to the internet. So this is the setup right now. But if you can see, there are uh, more spaces that I can plug into here, like adding more access point or CCTVs, right? So those are the things that you need to consider or your network might get messy when you expand your network. So there is still other specific reasons why you need to build out your network devices. But in general, those are the things that you need to consider. So jump in and let's start building this thing right here. Okay, so the first thing that I have here is the whole package. So when I ordered this one online, everything that I listed in terms of the uh, cabinet is all there. This is the network cabinet and the specification of this one is 9U. Um, 1U is equivalent to like three slots of uh, these holes, of the holes. I'm going to show it to you later and kind of, so that you can picture it because later on, if you are building your home network or office network, you might be needing a bigger one. And for me, in my case, I decided to get this open bay. We call this one open bay rack, which is going to be mounted on a wall or place it on top of something that's tough right so um it's going to be for a small office home office kind of thing so um open bay could be possible right away because it's only me who has access to this uh, cabinet unless you have office and then you need to secure this one uh, i would suggest that you get something that is closed uh, that has a glass tempered glass something like that so that you need to open it before you access the devices inside it um, the cool thing about this uh, open bay rack that I got is um, uh, you can already see the quality of this product because you can see how it is built. And I have seen um, network cabinets before. Uh, they are like made of flat, thin sheets. So it's kind of going to hurt you. It's maybe as sharp as a knife, something like that. So as compared to this one, uh, it's really different right so you can see as i close it up uh, you can see that there's this quality feel or even if you're touching this one there's this premium feel of this kind of uh, open bay rack at the same time the way you're going to assemble this one is kind of uh, you can easily even without looking at the diagram you can easily assemble it like a puzzle and come up with the device at the same time uh, it is adjustable. It has this arm that can extend, that you can adjust. All right, so let's dive in more to the specifics of the uh, network cabinet. So it comes with uh, some accessories like this. It's a um, mountable, I don't know how you term it, where you can place this nut at the back of this hole, right? As you can see what I'm doing right now. You can either do it sideways or... Uh, the other way, it has this locking position to clip it to the hole or the square hole that you have there so that you can easily um, screw the screws just like this. Just to give you a demo, 
so that you can see it clearly because this is the case later on if you are going to mount the devices okay so i i hope you got the idea so you have a number of these you can simply slide it like so let's do it here there you go okay so you'll see more of this often when we are going to mount the devices well of course the second thing that we have here is the server tray now this is one u now as i have unpacked it if you can see it will take up up to three holes that's equivalent to one u so that you have an idea of it so the server tray the purpose of this is to hold up things that are not rack mountable uh, like the modem of the service provider you cannot directly mount it like the server tray even my wi-fi router so i'm going to install this server tray so that i can place it on top of it the modem and the wi-fi router my wi-fi router is there and then i'm thinking of the modem just beside it another device that i have here is a used tp-link gigabit switch which is manageable that i can configure soon so i'm going to install it also this is actually an example of a rack mountable device so it basically fits this rack right away so you don't need server tray something like that so as you can see i have done some changes on the server tray that i did uh, earlier so i place it on top so that i have space down below here and at some point uh, the heavier device as much as possible is going to stay down so that it's going to make it firm and sturdy right so i'm going to install this one so that you can see and the use of the stippling gigabit manageable switch is for distribution later on i'm going to add more devices i'm going to need more ports so i have it here ready already and one thing that really made me use this one is it's a used device but it is manageable when we say manageable it is you can configure each port okay and of course it's gigabit the next one i have here is this netgear the reason why i have the netgear it is poe power over ethernet so once you plug other devices that supports poe they get power from this small device like most often um, access points and cctv you don't need to have an external plug so that they can turn on all right so that's one of the best use cases of poe or power over ethernet at this point in time i'm trying to install the cable manager and if you don't know the use of this one from the word cable manager you're going to use this one to make things neat and clean especially if you're going to uh, wire these cables from the switch to the router to the other devices at this point in time i'm trying to figure out where is the best location for this now um, you can see that most of my devices will be plugged into the switch so in between the wi-fi router and the switch would be the best location for the cable manager so if you have not seen on previous shots in this video i'm trying to place in the square nuts at the back so that it's easy for us to screw or clip this uh, cable manager into the server cabinet okay so there are changes at this point you can basically remove those nuts again and relocate them so that it would match the placement of the device you're trying to put in there you go that's how easy it is so the next thing we have here is a rack mountable power strip wherein of course all the devices that we are going to place here on our network rack would be plugged in here and it's easier for us to manage which device is plugged in and it's easier to troubleshoot when it comes to power outage because we only have one location for everybody who is plugged in okay as usual that's how easy it is well of course it's time to power up the devices then try to fix 
and power up the other device. Power it on. Okay, we have the Netgear. The modem of the service provider is plugged also. That I'm going to plug in the TP-Link switch. Okay, just to test this one out, we have all power, so the power strip is working. We're going to fix those cables later because we are going to cable the devices that we have using these used cables. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and cable them and you're going to see where the um, cable manager is going to play its role here. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have a basic understanding of networking wherein I'm going to plug the modem going to the Wi-Fi router then the Wi-Fi router goes to the switch and the switch is going to uh, uh, distribute the connection and one of my active access point, which is PoE, will be plugged into the Netgear, all right? So you can see, and it depends on how you really fix your cables, nothing so standard here, it depends on your home network again, all right? Okay, so as of this moment, there are only few devices that I have that's going to be connected to the LAN. Like I have two PC, two IP cameras, uh, two access points. But of course, later on, I'm going to add more smart devices that are going to be connected to this. All right, so there you go. Now, please tell me this looks nice, right? Let's do a quick tour. We have the modem provided by the ISP. I disabled the Wi-Fi because I have the Netgear RX20 to be my main router and Wi-Fi. Okay, because of course it's Wi-Fi 6 and it has gigabit ports and all the, the, the speedy things. Then of course the next one I have here is the Netgear, which is PoE, that powers up the CCTV and the PoE access point that I have. So that, that is what plugged there. Okay, and I have extra because for my network expansion, as I have mentioned, for PoE devices. Then of course I have my TP-Link gigabit manageable switch as well. So I have three connected, basically two because the other one is uplink, the other one is up, the other one is down because it's not yet powered on. And of course, I have extra ports that I have there. And yeah, the last one you have there is the power strip, of course. Now, if you want to look for the devices that I used here or something similar, I'll place an Amazon link down below. Now, if it's your first time here, guys, smash that like button because it helps in the algorithm in the success of my YouTube channel. At the same time, if you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe. And I would like to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.